And now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Pucko Podcast! And welcome to the 341st episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my scrumptious co-host. The fluffiest swims are good. And Sublime Manic. And as always, we are here to bring you another exciting episode of the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a name originally come up by Ed White during the first American spacewalk. Uh, he, that's what he called the mission to walk outside on a spaceship. So there, there you go. There you have it. That's the origin of Puckle, not the Pokemon Underground Champions League. But we are the Pokemon podcast that will bring everything to you from the TCG to the video game to now apparently Pokemon Quest. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, I have a built in. I have a built in. What's it called? Spin off game today. So there we go. Yeah. Pokemon Quest just came out. But it, it, a lot of things in Pokemon happened this week. This is a very exciting Pokemon week. It always has been in the past few years, like right before E3. They'll always drop just something for us. Uh, if you look back at 2016, we got all of the Alolan starters. Right before E3 in 2017, we got all of the Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon stuff. And then this week, we had that really random press conference that just kind of came out of nowhere. And we got um, we got the Switch games, and we got Pokemon Quest, and just a host of information. We'll, we'll, we'll dive more into it into the topic today. Yeah, it's like I saw a meme that like encapsulated this perfectly and it was like bethesda oh we're gonna make like a stream that's gonna catch everyone's attention and we grab everyone before he e- three and then it was like the pokemon company hold my beer yeah that's exactly what happened it was nuts it was a really big deal i i was really surprised when i heard about it i'm like there's no way and then other people started tweeting about it and then it just i started following everybody live on twitter I feel like they missed out on it a little bit because they could have announced it just a, like the day of, at least, to the public. Yeah. And they could have streamed it. Three hours before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They could have streamed it and that would have worked out really well. And I, I don't know. I, I have a lot of thoughts about what they announced and how, how this direction goes for Pokemon in the future. But we'll, like I said, that's all for the topic. Other than like getting super excited about all of these announcements, what you guys do this week? How are your weeks? How is your life? my life is busy i'm looking at houses and that takes a lot of mental energy and time so i love house hunting though house hunting is a lot of fun even though it's very tiring um yeah yeah. well i finally fit you know keep going sorry 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 sorry, sorry. no i was just saying pokemon wise you know pdl the usual i i beat shamu incredibly yeah not i mean not so incredibly because I had some really good advice when I was team building mm. from Sparky. And apparently when the two fairy type trainers in Puckle come together, they come together hard and they <laughs> win. <laughs> so shout out to Sparky. Oh <laughs> uh, man, it also doesn't help that Shamu's on like super tilt right now from Piddle. I, I get the impression that he's so busy and so tired. <laughs> well, I think the biggest thing is he's just like, he keeps telling me, he's like, I'm so done with Piddle right now. I'm just so done with it. I think what happened was he got he got super cheesed a few weeks ago. It just set him on super tilt for the entire season. Like I don't think he's gonna do. That I well. mean, just I, I don't know if it was last week or the week before he got frozen by ice beam twice in a mm-hmm. row. 
And then it was and then there dumb. was another time that he got rest talked to death. It was it was just brutal. And he got rest talked. Uh so like he was he's just not feeling good right now. I I I beat him with me near in the end. It was oh, man. so stupid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I mean, Chesno did most of the work, but again, when you <laughs> win with Chesno and Minior, it means that Shamu is on tilt. Yeah, he's on tilt right now. It's pretty bad, just in general on Pokemon Sense, because he and I are working on a uh, separate project that we're hoping to reveal next week, but we don't know for sure if it's going to come out next week or not. And he and I are working on a separate Puckle par- project, so watch all of our media outlets, by the way, if you want some of that goodness. So we're we're watching we're working on some other stuff and you can just tell during that like he's on tilt for competitive Pokemon he's not in his he- right head right now I think once P- Piddle's over and he'll just be able to like take a break for a month or so and I think he'll be back into it but right now I just think Piddle's just got him on too much of a tilt I think what Thatch is trying to say is if you want Shamu's badge from Summer League do it now yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just really on tilt. I mean, he loves his summer league team. Granted, like he's really happy with it. But yeah, how about you, Sublime? What you been up to? Um, well, just personally, I've been really busy because last week was the last week of school, so school is out for summer. Um, I have a lot of grad school I'm doing this summer and things, but my life just got a lot more free in terms of time for me to be doing other things. So that's good. In terms of Pokemon, um, I'm so close to leveling up in Pokemon Go, which always takes a while, so it's always an Ooh. accomplishment. Um, yeah, I'm almost to 32. And then um, I think I'm maybe like 50k away. You know, I'm probably like 30k away by That's now. That's not bad at all, actually. Like, after this, just go to your park and, like, you'll get that if you just go play for an hour or two. Exactly. And then I'm also working on a project with Shamu. Actually, and some other people. I, I know so, this project. Yeah, just stay tuned. <laughs> Actually, I think you both do because Whimsicott helps set the project up. Yeah, we're we're very. I mean, I'm excited because this summer we're gonna be putting out a lot of new stuff, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, we're finally in a place where, like, I feel like we can start to do that a little bit more right now, and we're doing it in avenues that are different than just like the traditional. Hey, we're posting a podcast on our feed type deal. So I I really like that. I I like doing that because. It helps us grow in other places, and I really want that. I want to see that happen in the near future with Puckle. Um, all right, then. For me, uh, I haven't been doing too much, actually, in Puckle. Po- well, I have, because I was working on that side project with Shamu this week, and, and Sigma. Sigma was helping with that as well. So we were working on that. Uh, hopefully, this week, we can get something out for it, because I would really like to see that start to take shape and form, because it's part of like an overall strategy for Battlecast that I'm hoping kind of takes hold. Because I finally sat down and came up with a better format for Battlecast. Because I was just so unhappy with it uh, for the past forever. Maybe the first like two I was I was just I was okay with because it was so fresh, but then after that it just never grew into what I wanted it to grow into. But now we have a nice solid uh, battle plan for it. So we'll see how that works out. And then uh, what else are we working on? We're also yeah, I'm working on that project. Hopefully next week you guys can start to see the fruits of that labor. And other than that, not much Pokemon stuff. I watched my wife play Pokemon Quest. I haven't played it myself. I downloaded it last night and I just didn't get to it. Mostly, I've heard good good and bad things about it. Like people are all over the internet all about Pokemon Quest. And another thing that I noticed this week was looking at PokeTubers. A lot of them are starting to jump on this Pokemon Go bandwagon after Let's Go was announced. And I, I can explain why. Yeah. I, I, because I think they're finally realizing that Pokemon takes Pokemon Go seriously. So they want to jump on that bandwagon for monies. Granted, I don't like the idea of chasing the money. But let the, to each their own, I guess, right? Uh, I mean, it's their job. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. For me, it's not, that my, it's not my job, thankfully. So I can just do whatever I want. And we don't have to become... Everything doesn't have to become Pokemon Go. Which is something that I fear. But... Well, again, it's more to talk about at the topic. So uh, I guess we'll we'll take a break here, though, guys. And we'll, well, not a break, but we're just going to kick it on over to the news. So let's cue that epic music. Coming to you live from the Lavender Town Radio Tower. 
And on to the news. The news uh, has a few things. First of all, we had a Pokemon Quest announcement that dropped on us on Tuesday. They were just like, hey, by the way, we made this game called Pokemon Quest. It is a free-to-play title on the Switch. You can download it right now. It is coming to mobile phones, I believe, in the middle of June. So sometime this month, it's coming to phones. It's interesting. I've seen some gameplay of it. I haven't played it much myself. It The concept is uh, Nintendo takes down Pixelmon because they just want to do cube, cube-shaped Pokemon. And <laughs> you run around this island. It's very Pokemon Rumble-esque in that format. And you can just go around and you collect more Pokemon. You do missions with these Pokemon. And the goal is to clear this island. It's it's definitely a mobile title because you've got your timer on it and everything. It's a free to start game. Well, you could probably get beat the game with free to play. It's just it will take you a little while. So it's an interesting concept. It's it's a little bit different. The most interesting part of Quest for me personally, though, I, I don't mean to cut you off, is uh, is that Pokemon themselves made this game freak developed this spin-off title this is the first spin-off title like game freak themselves developed for pokemon that is interesting really yeah. mm-hmm. this is what they chose to make that as. Well, yeah okay <laughs> yes <laughs> all right you do you game freak <laughs> it's i a- don't know it was so weird yeah, it's different it's i mean it's it's definitely just your free to play model and like i said it's pokemon rumble just a little bit different than Pokemon Rumble. Not much different. It's the same <laughs> deal, though, where you're just like, oh, this is not really that big of a deal. It's just another mobile title for Pokemon fans to go grab. And I, definitely the more casual Pokemon fans or the people who are super obsessed with Pokemon. Those are the correct answers. I guess I fit those bills. I don't know. Even when it comes out of mobile, I think I'm skipping it because, A, I'm not a fan of the minecraft aesthetic mm-hmm. and b i watched joe merrick suffer through this game on twitter getting more and more desperate as he covered it and like i no, i'm not attracted to something that could make that man suffer so much oh man that's that's true it's honestly it's an interesting game it's an interesting concept i think honestly from the presentation that they had this week I was more amazed by the business decisions that Pokemon made than by the things that they announced. And uh, like I said, we'll get to it in the topic, but I feel like they're like everything they released was very business oriented for Pokemon. It was it was all in preparation for the game that comes out in 2019 that they announced as well. They announced that essentially Gen 8's coming in 2018, 2019, which 2019, I believe, yeah. yeah, which is what we all expected. Uh, I, it's not what we wanted, but it's what we expected. It's what we expected, um, especially those of us who were more level-headed. And if you weren't, if you were one of the people that expected Pokemon to come out this year, one, you probably weren't a longtime fan of the series, or at least in its modern day. Because if you're a modern day Pokemon fan, you know that it's like back to back years, and there's a gap year, and then back to back years, and then a gap year, and that's how they've been operating in the past few years. And that's uh, that that's typically the pattern of the release cycle. So expecting a full fledged Pokemon game this year, I think, was a little much. Like tw- early twenty nineteen was the earliest I could see it happening, and I'm glad that I'm not crazy. And that's exactly what they did. They they're just like, yeah, we're just gonna put it to the end of twenty nineteen because now you get these like spacer games. And yeah, I mean, I in defense of those fans, they would have at a point making the argument that. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were essentially Sun and Moon again. Yes. So there wasn't a ton of work going behind those, but still... The there pattern... shouldn't have been if there was. Well, <laughs> if you consider that, though, even if you consider that, if you look at just the history of third versions throughout Pokemon, a lot of them were almost the same way that way. Oh, absolutely. Except for Gen 5. Except for Gen 5. But yep. if you look mm-hmm. at... If you look at Gen 4, Gen 3, Gen 2, Gen 1, all the games are just the same with slight differences. And that's exactly what we got with Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. They went back to that formula. And I hope that they see that that didn't go well. But we all bought it. So <laughs> I don't know. Well, don't know. The, thing, the thing is, in my opinion, that the last 
real third version was a long time ago. And when they announced two games, everyone's mind immediately went to Black to White 2, which mm-hmm. were completely different games. Sequels, legit sequels, so much better. Exactly. It was a very uh, unique yeah. situation in the history of Pokemon main series games. And now you get two platinum versions for the yeah. price of two. So <laughs> It's a good time. It's a good time, everybody. Uh, all right. So let's move on, though, to more less depressing things. Uh, so there was a typo, maybe. But uh, so Latios and Latios are going to end in Pokemon Go as raid bosses. However, there was Hoa was only supposed to go until I believe the seventh of June, just like Latios and, and Latios. Mm-hmm. However, and now it, it's the twenty first. Now it's the twenty first, probably because they want a gap between whatever they're going to do next, which is probably the Reggies. That's my guess because we're in Gen sense. three. Yeah, I think the Reggies mm-hmm. are going to be what's next, mm-hmm. and we'll probably get them on a rotation, kind of like Soikun Ente and uh, the Legendary Birds and everything. So that's what I'm guessing is next, uh, sometime in July. That's what we'll see. Um. So there, there you go. Also, if you're playing Pokemon Go, remember Adventure Week, which is going on right now, which gives you bonuses for spinning stops, gives you bonuses for visiting new stops, and has Kabuto, Ammonite, Lily, Aerodactyl, and uh, what's the other one? Anorith. Aaron. Anorith. And Aaron. A lot of Aaron. A lot of Aaron. A lot of Aaron and Geodude as well. Just kind of mm-hmm. coming out of the woodwork with those. So that ends, though, on Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. So definitely make sure to get out and do that if you haven't already. It turns out that Kabuto, Ammonite, and Aerodactyl can be shiny as well. So watch out for that, fam. I just said fam on the show. That's a good time. All right. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is because I find this super interesting. So the shiny Zygarde event is out in the U.S. again, or out in general again. In the U.S., you have to go to GameStop to go get a download card code for it. And if you're in Europe, Whimsicott, you can just download it. Yep. And I, I, this amazes me. Like, So it's more consistent over there. It, correct me if I'm wrong, because you guys have been just downloading them for the most part since it since like the no. legendary event started. OK, explain, please. Um, We tend to get one on download, one in GameStop, one on download, one in GameStop. So I would be so happy with that. But I feel like what happened recently is one because uh, right when Pokemon Go came out, I think that was before we had the like mythical event. Pokemon Go came out that year. And when we had the mythical event, though, it was it was the same way. It was some on download, some at GameStop. And that was it. That was the only variety we had. This one is getting weird. And I think it's because a lot of stores see a lot of power in the Pokemon brand, a lot of like what they can grab from it. And so the one that I think was the worst offender for Target. the US. Was yeah, it was Target? The, yeah, it was the Target one. Where we can only get Raikou and Entei for like a week if you go to Target. And the the problem with that yeah. is the big problem I have with Raikou and Entei being given away at Target is that Target doesn't always have like dedicated staff for like their game department, their electronics department. So you mm-hmm. can't always find somebody to go get one. It's not going to be very obvious if they do have one. GameStop's at least a hub for this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I just I can't wait to see what happens the rest of the year, because I am almost certain it's going to be more than just GameStop. We're probably going to get something really weird. It's going to be like, oh, you have to go to Tim Hortons to go and buy a coffee. Stop. Stop. And, Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, because the U.S. is getting screwed in this. I mean, in my like uh, we had Hoopa uh, at McDonald's when that first came out. So I would argue that that's weird. So that one was kind of a throwback for me personally, because when Hoopa went to McDonald's, that wasn't the first time they've done anything like that, because right when the Nintendo Wi-Fi system launched, Nintendo partnered hardcore with uh, with uh, McDonald's because McDonald's was always a hotspot that you could connect. See, to I didn't know that was at. the throwback to me. That was the throwback from when I was a kid. And that was the Happy Meal toy mm. with the gold plated. That's was it Burger McDonald's King. McDonald's or Burger King? That was that's Burger, Burger King. King. That was legit, though. Those are some nice ass. To- like, um, yeah, really nice. Yeah. I still have a couple of those somewhere. Me too. Yeah, no, they're that. That's true. But I, they actually that's did it because they were just Gen like one back in, in Gen, our day in Gen four. They did a big like thing there and occasionally they would do a few other things i i do hate that they're download codes and they're not go there to download i i hate and enjoy it one because i can go there and grab extra codes and give them to people Mm -hmm. but i also miss the adventures of gen 4 because i would actually with back in the day with professor sycamore 
he and I, when like Dark Rye was announced, that was the first one for Gen 4 that was like a, a mystery gift event download thing. We had to like make sure we traversed to a GameStop together and then went to go download it and then came home. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I like doing that, like where you had to go and you had to download it. And if you had like four cartridges, you sat there and you popped each cartridge into your DS. So. I actually remember you telling a story in a really mm-hmm. old episode about mm-hmm. a guy with a console of DSs downloading like seven dark, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that was a thing. People did it. There mm-hmm. was also another guy. His name was Zelgarath. I think he's still on YouTube as PKMN blogger or something like that. He made a point of going to every event and he'd stay there for the duration of that event. And he would just constantly restart his game, trade the Pokemon, get to the point where you can mystery gift, trade the that's Pokemon crazy. over, restart the game. Yeah, do it. No. Yeah, it was it was a that's little excessive. Uh, wow. But he, he used to do stuff like that. I mean, now it's a little bit easier because one, you're limited. You can only download one. So that makes your life a little bit easier. Um, but two, it's all in code. So you can just go home and do it. If you really want to, but although if you have every game, you can download it four times. So. I prefer trying to. Uh, now that I'm relocated, we did this back in November. I got a bunch of Marshadow codes handed to me. I'm gonna mm-hmm. try to get some more Zygarde codes because I like just giving them away on Twitter, um, mm-hmm. and just because that's a that's a good time. It's easier for people to get there. People still DM me about getting a Marshadow code, and I have to be like, yeah, those expired like three months ago. Um, (laughs) because they expired back in February. So I don't even have them anymore. Even if I did, though, they wouldn't work. Um, I do need to contact some of those people, though, and be like, I'll just give you one. I have extra (laughs) Marsha. So you will. But that's something to consider. I I really like doing that. Um, Oh, oh, and I forgot one last piece of Pokemon Go news. Uh, Alolan Executor was released in the game. However, it's not readily available anymore. What? Yeah, so it was released on the day of the conference, and it was mm-hmm. available for like two mm-hmm. or three days, and it doesn't spawn anymore, though. Not not super common, at least. I feel like I've been catching them like every day since it got released. I haven't seen any. Not recently. yesterday. Not yesterday. Yeah, but I think it ended over the that. weekend. I get. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, they're not on sightings anymore. There is one tiny piece of news that I found really interesting. Mm-hmm. Like twenty-one years later. Somebody got their hand on the Pokemon Gold demo version. Oh my gosh, yes. I almost forgot to bring this up, but yes. It's insane. They downloaded all the sprites with the name. Like, the entire demo version is out there if you want to go hunting for it. And some of the Pokemon that Game Freak decided to pass on were A, Cray Cray, and B, awesome. Just look it up. You will not be disappointed. We could have had a water fire in Gen two. There That's were a lot it. of there were a lot of interesting Pokemon for that. That mm-hmm. I really so some of the concepts for the baby Pokemon I really liked. Uh, one the one that I'm really sad we didn't get was Baby Meowth, and I'm also really sad that we didn't get Baby what's it called, uh, Baby Paris because I feel like Baby Paris is adorable. And baby could, Paris was was something else, like. I, one I really, really like was the initial concept for Blissey. Mm, happy, yeah. It was so much cuter. And this Wolfman Warwolf thing, mm-hmm. the super fluffy one, was amazing. But I think maybe my favorite one may have to be Rayleap. Ooh. It's just, why, why wouldn't they have implemented it in one of the following generations? It's one Pokemon... No evolutions, great concept, and it just dropped. I so a lot of the, the so I'm saying this without the listeners seeing these pictures, but if you do go ahead and look at the sprites, my big opinion on a lot of the stuff they passed on or a lot of stuff they did redesigned, if you look at it, especially I think it really hits home with the preliminary hop up designs for myself, mm-hmm. is that everything is very Digimon esque in art style. And oh. granted, they might have come out with the they might have come up with these concepts before Digimon launched, but Digimon launched by the time this game was ready to come out. And so to avoid confusion, I could definitely see them axing a lot of these designs. Because if you look at some of them, they don't really follow like the Pokemon motif of design. They they like especially That's a very good point. I think the, I think the biggest one that stands out to me in that case, it's a really awesome Pokemon and just like as a cool creature. 
the the shark with the anchor as a tail. With the anchor. Yeah, that's that's off. That's completely I, off. It's, it's not. If you think of that one, and you're just like, okay, that's not a Pokemon because Pokemon definitely has this essence. And I, it was probably Gen two where it really kicked in, where they go, okay, this is kind of what it means to be a Pokemon, and. If you take a look at Pokemon, like they definitely have some overall design that you can say, okay, that's probably a Pokemon. If you're a fan of the series, at least, right? And mm-hmm. if you were to look at some other creature from something like Monster Hunter or something from Digimon, you'd be like, okay, that's a Digimon. And like you could tell the difference just in the character design. So that that's just something to think about. Um, and that that's why Ultra Beasts are such a huge thing. Like they they've took so many years to come up with all of these great Pokemon designs and like came up with what a Pokemon is. And if you look at Ultra Beast, they all felt off to us, right? That's because they broke the rules that they had for Pokemon. Well, they found a very cool in-story justification for it. I'm yeah. okay with it. But that's why they did it, though. That's the, why the Ultra Beast fe- felt off to us all at first. Because they broke the rules for Pokemon design when they did Mm-mm. it. And they did it intentionally because they knew it would make us feel that way. So just yeah, that was cool. Just food for thought, but that is going to be it for the news outside of some Puckle news. And the Puckle news is that PuckleCon is happening. I just have to say this every time because I've gotten asked about five or six times when slash where PuckleCon is. PuckleCon is in the Dayton Convention Center on July twenty first and twenty second. There's actually a thing you can download on our website for it and get the full schedule of events. Um, but you can go ahead. And it's there. It's July 21st and 22nd, Dayton Convention Center, room 306. Be there or be square. And more so, Puckle News. Don't forget, Summer League starts today. Oh, yeah. Summer League starts today. Don't forget that at all, guys. Uh, if you want to start badge collection, please do so. Um, it's going to be a good time. All of the gym leaders and their times. Gym leaders are all right on the Discord server, so they're easy to find if they're online. Very so. easy to find. The, the roll color is obnoxious. You'll see us right away. I made it obnoxious on pers- purpose so that you can... I know you did. Yeah. All right. So, yes, Summer League. I almost forgot. That does start because I have to do that. So definitely check that out if you guys are interested in just learning competitive Pokemon. It's an awesome chance to do that. But we are going to kick it on over to Puckle's Poke Quiz, where we are going to quiz your co-host on their innate Pokemon knowledge. And welcome to Puckos Poke Quiz, the part of the show where we are going to quiz your co-hosts on their innate Pokemon knowledge. So, of course, that means no computer screens. Our hosts are going to be acting as a team to answer these questions. There are going to be five questions worth one point apiece. One of these questions will have a bonus point attached to it, so that's six points. And they will be allowed to use one hint throughout the entire uh, questions, which if they don't get all the questions correct and they don't use the hint, they can cash that in for a seventh point. So there's a possible total of seven. They are competing against the other hosts on the show to get a potential uh, 30 points, and the winner gets a plush from Pokemon Center of their choice under $20. So there we go. There are the rules. There's what's at stake. And I'm pretty sure Whimsicott's winning because I haven't been keeping score. So You should totally like give me my actual score. Like, I maybe later this week after the show's done. <laughs> <laughs> because at this point, I'm curious. All right, so we are going to go ahead and we are going to kick things off with a what I think is a softball from Bod Talk. So out of all of the Pokemon games that have ever come out, two of we're not going to include third versions here, by the way. Uh, two of the uh, games, like two different versions together combined, actually are the top-selling games on their console. What games are those? Huh. The top-selling games on their console. Mm-hmm. I, I, mm, it's not red and blue because they got beat by Tetris. But what about gold and silver? Gold and silver are on... Oh, uh, do you think... Because there's the Game Boy and the then Game there's Boy the Game Boy, Game Boy Color. Color. Game Boy Color yeah. is not a separate entity. Exactly. What? It, I feel thing. like it should be. All, yeah. all right. All right. Okay. So it's not those. Um, then it gets harder because there's a lot more games. <laughs> yes. But um, um, I think Generation. A lot three... of people bought uh, DSs or 3DSs. A lot of people bought 3DSs for X and Y. 
Yes. But um, 3DS also has stuff like um, Mario and Smash Bros. Um, I don't know that that would have outsold. Like, I don't know. Pokemon is pretty much the reason people buy um, the handhelds. So you think... In my mind? In my think, mind. Maybe I'm wrong. You think Pokemon X and Y might be the best-selling games on 3DS ever? I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It's really tough. Because um, the thing is, all the other uh, like big Nintendo titles, usually they have their main series, or like their big ones, go to the console. Um, and Pokemon's kind of unique in that it's like the big one that has always been on the um, mobile. That's my point. The, like on the on the DS, like what's what's fighting against Diamond and Pearl? Well, uh, black and white. And Black and white uh, didn't sell nearly as true. much as Diamond and Pearl. I guess. I don't know. I wasn't really part of it is I wasn't playing Diamond and Pearl when it came out. So I have a bad gauge of how successful it was. And I also okay. think they're just garbage compared to almost every other game in the series. Okay. So, so I'm like, why did anyone buy that? But I'm okay. probably wrong. I'm gonna need an answer. To close. Okay. I think it's uh, XY. You think it's okay, Diamond and Pearl? That's- no, 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 I'm fine with X and Y. Like, I'm fine I hope with I remember too, I hope I remember correctly that Red and Blue sold less than Tetris, but it's just because Tetris came with the console. What's your answer? Go for it. Go for it. I, I, I think it's X and Y. Okay, let's go with that. That is unfortunately incorrect, but it's super close. So the answer is actually Ruby and Sapphire. Are you the, kidding? The Are Game you Boy. Kidding? The why? Game Boy Advance, why? Why? the Game Boy Advance didn't have that many games or good games, oh. I should say. Um, and so, actually, let me give you the list of the best-selling games from uh, the Game Boy Advance. Already, one, two, and three. The top, the top three slots: uh, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, followed by Pokemon Emerald. All the Pokemon games ca- take up the one, two, and three slots for the Game Boy Advance, followed by Mario Kart in the number four slot. And unfortunately for the 3DS. X and Y are the second best selling games for the 3DS. Uh, uh, so close. So close. Right what, after what uh, Mario Kart 7. See? That's not that good of a Mario Kart either. Mario that kind Kart of 7 you. came with a 2DS bundle, though. Mm-hmm. It came with a bundle, and they pushed it real hard. Like, if you were a kid buying a 3DS and you weren't buying Pokemon, you were buying Mario Kart. Because they still push Mario Kart today, even. Because that's one of those games that they drop to, like, their select things as well. So it's 20 bucks instead of 30 and you can get cheap Mario Kart now. People are still buying it. So. To be fair, like the new Mar- the latest Mario Kart for the Switch is pretty good. Yeah. Real good. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I, Mario Kart 7 is essentially in that same vein. Like it Mario Kart 8 for the Switch and for the Wii U for, in that matter. Uh, Mario Kart did really well like just in 7 and 8 back to back. They did really well together. They they played off each other very well. So that is unfortunately incorrect, but we'll move on to this next question. And I hope you guys can get this. I want to know which rock type Pokemon is the lightest rock type Pokemon by weight. Well, that's interesting. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's it's Minior. I was wondering if it could be Minior after it like changes um, form. Uh, I think I think there's a decent chance it's me and your. Well, let's Let me go think. through the other rock types too, just in case. Like a, a very light one could mm-hmm. be like Diancie or Carbink. I, um, mm. But um, another super like. No. Um, and four no. And three no. <sighs> no. Most of them are not like inherently light. Yes, there are Rockruff's a few. Rockruff's pretty that... light, probably. Rockruff. Yeah, mm. it's a puppy. I don't think it's that mm. light. Like I'm thinking, it's one of those Pokemon that have the rock type like kind of tacked onto it. Sure, and Minior um, seems like a good option, but I, don't know, I like Minior. I but think I Minior never makes sense. Minior never, makes sense because it loses weight once when it, it's um, in core yeah, form. Shields down, right? Yep. Uh, I'm gonna need the answer. Why do you want to go with Splunk? I think let's go with what you said. Let's go with Minior. Okay, Minior. With the that, shields down. 
that is correct. Minior core form is the lightest rock type Pokemon. All right, so we're going to move on to uh, just a little bit, a little bit to the past. We're talking Gen Six right now. So back in Gen Six, there was an official poll taken to rank all 649 Pokemon. Or yeah, 49. No, not 649. Oh. That's Gen Five. Mm. 721, 721 Pokemon. Pokemon, and they ranked them all. And, and I wanted, everyone got a free one, right? Uh, they got the free yeah. top one, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the top. They one. also they also made a note of who was at the bottom. And I want to yes. know who was voted as the worst Pokemon. It was Simi's age. <laughs> no, not Simi's age. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, that's uh, Simi's year. I think you're right. Yeah, that sounds very correct. It was Simi's year. Is that I, your I, final I, answer? Yeah, yes. top one was Arceus and bottom was Simi's year. I thought you were going to say the top. I'm like, it was an Arceus because I remember getting it for free. The, no, the bottom was Simi's year. I think you're right. That yeah. is. Or Sage. Seer? Or Sage, which no, 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 no. It was Simi's here. It, it was the it was fire the one. one. I just it was mis- the evolved fire I just one. misspoke. Yeah. yeah. That is correct. It was Simi's here, the Pokemon that everybody hated. Although, honestly, I think the water and grass I are mean, worse than his, the fire. I mean, his one. head literally looks like fiery poo. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're so right. Better than broccoli. Mm, I can't with them. Oh, broccoli right. is better. That's why Simi Sage wasn't the very bottom of the, of the list. The next one is your bonus point question. I came up with this in the five minutes before the segment, so it's either really hard or really easy, and I'm going to say it's the latter. Wait, which one was the two-pointer? This one. Oh, okay. This one. uh, The two-pointer is right here. So so the Pokemon company is made up of an ownership of three different companies, including Nintendo. What are the other two? Uh, Nintendo, Pokemon Company, and Creatures, Inc. No, no, they make up the Pokemon company. Oh! Oh, okay, Nintendo, Game Freak, and Game Creatures Freak. Inc. Sure, yeah. That's your final answer? Yeah. I didn't know that third one. I'm glad you did. That is correct. Uh, it is Game Freak, Creatures Inc., and Nintendo. I think that's just really important to bring up because when the announcements were made on Tuesday, Nintendo stock jumped. And it, it's Pokemon Company that's making a lot of these things. Uh, though Nintendo is going to make a lot of money on selling their 20 million Switch units, probably. So keep that in mind. Mm hmm. Uh, all right, so that gives you guys four points so far today, and we're still on to the stack question, which is sometimes the easiest question of them all. I just but we're still gonna use our hint for this since we yeah, can't. Yeah, you might that. as well. Exactly. We, we more certainly will. Yeah. Let me figure out uh, what base stat we're doing today, and we'll have a good time. So let's see. Oh, oop, 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 oop. You're gonna look at the fastest Pokemon, who is also a fighting type. Fastest fighting type Pokemon. Go. What is? Give us a is, hint. Uh, it, it's a dual type. It's also um, it's also something that I missed. Um, it's very high up there. It's like third overall. Oh gosh. Third fastest Pokemon overall. Base 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 speed of one fifty one. Oh, oh wow. it's Feromosa. Is Feromosa one fifty one? Yes. Then yeah. That is correct. Feromosa is the fastest fighting type Pokemon. I missed it. I looked at, I, lo- I saw Megalopunny, and then I looked up, and I'm like, wait a second, it's Feromosa when I asked the question. So that is correct. It is Feromosa. That gives you guys five points to that. That's pretty good. You're doing pretty strong yeah. here. So you guys are yeah. doing. That was that was a solid. That was a solid trivia segment. So I'm pretty sure Winslet's winning. She has probably like 20 points, and that that will get her close to uh, close to winning. So, and she just did Game Corner. So. Yeah, so that's an extra point. So there's everything for you guys. We are going to kick it on over to the topic after this short break. Hey, Puckalonians, it's Sublime Manic. Can't get enough of your favorite flip-flopping podcast? Then check out our social media. You can find links to our Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and YouTube all from our website, pucklepodcast.com. And you can join our Discord to hang out with your favorite hosts and other Puckalonians. Also, check us out at twitch.tv slash thepucklepodcast. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, consider subscribing to our Twitch channel. You can also check us out at YouTube at youtube slash pucklepodcast. And we also have a Patreon if you're able to give anything at patreon.com slash pucklepodcast. And on to the topic, our topic today is going to be the announcement of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. The games that I said weren't going to happen last week. I'm 
mean, we didn't exactly say they weren't going to happen. We said if they happen, they're going to be a spin-off, and we were half right. I mean, I think we were right. I, like I said, this is the world between main game and spin-off. It wasn't exactly spin-off, but it's not exactly main game. Now, they do call it mainline, and I did we say this on or off air? You said because it's really hard to market a B game. It was off air. Yeah. And, but it still stands. Yes, it's, it's hard to market a B game. So if you're just like, well, this is not exactly real Pokemon, people are going to be like, well, I don't want to play not real Pokemon. I want to play real Pokemon. And so you say this. I mean, I, I think Shady Penguin on Twitter said it the best to describe these games. He said, you can call a pigeon a duck all you want, but it's still a pigeon. So yep. in, in this case, because you can say these games are mainline all you want, but these aren't exactly mainline games, especially since we know we're getting some in 2019, which is really depressing because now I can't spend a year and a half speculating about whether or not we're getting a game in 2019. I just know. <laughs> we know it's happening. I mean, it was really funny. Last week, we were like, are we going to get Gen 8? And they were like, yes, you are. I mean, for the same reasons that I stated before as well, because I like toys. I, I think that's a big <laughs> point. I, I think also new Pokemon. They did a lot I of mean, things right with Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, in my opinion, though. I, it, like As I said at the beginning of the show, I, I'm more amazed from this conference about their business decisions than I am about the games themselves. I was very perplexed. Like Just hours before the conference, when our Sigma brought it up in the Discord chat, I was like telling everyone to chill because um, I couldn't see them announcing a main series game at a press conference. And technically they didn't. Like they only told us that we were getting the main series Switch games that they had already told us we were going to get. They just told us, yeah, that one is coming in 2019. But in the meanwhile, get this. And it was weird because the one thing that was announced at a press conference before had been Pokemon Go. So mm -hmm. this is like a weird hybrid in so many ways. It really is. I think this is mm -hmm. I think this is interesting for so many reasons. Because one, th like this just fits so many pieces of the puzzle so well. Because one, we all knew that Nintendo was going to be putting pressure on Game Freak to get a Pokemon game out. Right? Yeah. And we know that if you... I've been saying this since back when we were before we got Sun and Moon that Pokemon Red Two and Red Pokemon Blue Two would be a fantastic game to get, right? And <laughs> and then so it, it fits those two pieces of the puzzle, and then it fits a third one where it's how do you turn those mobile gamers into people who are going to buy Switches, right? And so and you make a, you make a game called Pokemon Let's that Go connects into the yeah yep. it connects into Pokemon Go. It's Kanto mm -hmm. all over again. And it's within a year of the Switch's lifespan, right? And yep. so it hits all of these bases. It's on, and on a fourth note as well, it comes out right before a core series game. So you get the people from Pokemon Go. Obviously, you're not going to get all 10 million of them to buy a Switch, right? But if they can buy a Switch, then it's easy for them to want to buy the next Pokemon game. Exactly. You're going to get people who go, man, this was a fun game, but I feel like it was a little too easy. I'd like a little bit more challenge in my Pokemon game. And then boom, 2019, you get a core series game. This, this game is a gateway drug to Pokemon. In my opinion, I, I'm still going to yes. buy it. I'm not saying that I think this game is awful. I think it's an interesting concept and I really like the idea of it. I, I think it's great for younger Pokemon fans and especially as an entry into the series, which is exactly what they said at the press conference. Because it's a much it's a much simpler concept. You do have online battles and online trading, but it's not in the same vein as like random battles or something that you can do on the mainline Pokemon games now. And yeah, there are as there's going to be no ranked battles, no battle spot, no wonder trade either. Yeah, it's really interesting what they decided to take and what they decided to leave out. But I really do like that this is just like, hey, here's a bare bones Pokemon game that's really simple to play. And they have the drop in multiplayer, which I, they, they're just like, they took, they found a way to add all of the features in that people wanted, by the way, that just aren't feasible to put into another game, into a, like a real core series True. Pokemon game. Because true, true, true. how long have we all been asking for like, well, not us but particularly, but people in the community have been asking for drop in multiplayer like that, where you can both be in the same world together. And they did that in this game. Are uh, we going to mention Pokemon following you? Yes, that happened. I, I mean, I'm not upset about <laughs> it. I knew this was inevitable because, it, I mean, at least people will stop asking for it. If it's not in Gen 8, though, people are going to lose their minds. I hope Game Freak understands this. Like, do it for me because I'm going to lose my mind from people complaining about it not being there. So I think Game Freak is starting to understand just how badly 
people can lose their minds about this stuff because if you look at the press conference, mm. they clearly stated, okay, we're going to have a game that is on Switch and mobile, then we're going to have a game that is on Switch and connect to mobile, and then we're going to have a game on Switch. And only after that they started telling you about Quest and about Let's Go because they knew that the moment they said there's going to be a game on the Switch and it's not Gen 8, it's Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, mm-hmm. people were going to like blanket their Twitter with insults and giant flame wars. Yep. And, and people still did that because they didn't pay enough attention. But to be fair, the press conference wasn't streamed. It was Thank just God. live tweeted. Thank God. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, maybe that was a thing too. But yeah, I think they are starting to get a sense that, like, someone said it very well. I don't know if you told me this or if I read it somewhere, that the Pokemon company is like the Apple of video gaming. Like, kind we're gonna of, give you, yeah. we're gonna give you what, what you don't you know need. you want. Exactly. Um, and you're going to get it the way we say you're going to get it. This is yes. what you and want. You just, yeah. You just don't We're going to tell it. you what you want. Exactly. But, you don't now, know what you want. but now that the internet is so loud, I think they're starting to figure out that they need to, and I'm not going to say pander. They just need to be careful about the way they announce the things they want to do. Oh, absolutely. So that people don't take them the wrong way. Exactly. I think that's entirely true. It's it's an interesting concept. I, I really like the business decisions they're making here, though. Just grabbing everybody at, that they can for the Switch and for Pokemon to like monetize those people. I just think it's really interesting what they're doing there. I think Quest is another way to do that because I think it's better than some of the other mobile games that are out there for Pokemon. It's particularly like Pokemon Duel and stuff like that. Um, it, it's It's like the Pokemon Rumble Blast series and they can move it over. Uh, I, though I, I think Let's Go is probably one of the better things they've done, though. They, they found a way to just kind of hit an audience that I think needed to be tapped into. Uh, and they're going to bring back a lot of the Gen 1ers. Maybe some of them will be interesting or be interested in this series. And I think I think that there's so much to be said for Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee and just like that term. Um, I also like it because it's probably a way going forward to fill those gap years. Because we were talking about the pattern before of two years, then a Pokemon, then a gap year, then two games, then a gap year, right? In the recent yes. Pokemon video game development cycle. And uh, I think that's uh, this is a great way so there's no more gap year. Instead of a gap year, it's here's Pokemon, let's go um, Totodile and Cyndaquil or something like that, right? You left out the best starter? I was Seriously? just waiting for that comment. I was waiting for that <laughs> I'm doing it on I think purpose. You almost did it on purpose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we'll get Gen 8 next year, right? In 2019. And then 2020, maybe we get Diamond and Pearl remakes and we get, or we get some other Gen 8 game, right? And then 2021, we get Gen 2 Let's Go versions, right? And Probably. They, they can, I mean, this is a really good way to do it because they can literally keep that cycle up forever. They can keep it up forever and they give themselves breathing space and working Mm -hmm. time to actually make good main series games. And about this, people are getting very excited about the declaration that the main series game we're getting in 2019 is going to be more competitively oriented, which I took mm. to mean, I took to mean simply that this is the game we're going to use for VGC. Not it's going to be geared towards competitive players, but many people are interpreting it that way. What's your take? I interpret it the same way you interpret it. Uh, that it's going to be the one that we use for VGC and stuff like that. But I do think that because we have this series that's much more open to a younger audience and much more open to teaching people how to play Pokemon, that maybe we'll start to see in the core series, things start to kind of ease up. You know how we all complained about the hand-holding in Sun and Moon? Mm-hmm. Uh, at the, especially at the beginning for those like first two hours imagine that not being there anymore because we already have these games that introduce you to pokemon if you're playing this one you know pokemon right and they can kind of have that aspect and then what they can do is they can even take it and maybe give the story a little bit of a darker turn you know darker i'm gonna put darker in quotes but they can they can take mm-hmm. a more serious tone with the core series pokemon games and i really like that 
perspective is potentially being able to say, hey, we no longer have to cater to kids in a Pokemon game. And we could see it cater to something more like, I mean, I would be cool if we had a protagonist that was 15, 16 years old as opposed to 10 years old. I guess we did it in black and white. We they had, were, they were like 14 or something, 13, yeah, 14. Uh, they were 13. But I, what I'm thinking of is something more like mm-hmm. Pokemon Coliseum, right? Where we can get a trainer that's like 17, 18 years old as the protagonist. See, all of the things you're saying are exactly what I was hoping and where I want this question to go. <laughs> Well, I think it's the natural evolution, especially with what they're trying to do. I think this is honestly the best way to handle it. I mean, if you fingers crossed, if you're going to go ahead and rip out the casual side of Pokemon that already exists, you can go ahead and then it's like it's like taking the yin and yang symbol and you're taking out like the good parts. And now all we have left is the bad part. That's a really bad. um, So many Gen 5 references going around. Yeah. That's a that's a really bad reference because I don't want to say Pokemon is bad, but you can you can take the light from the dark and then you have the only the dark left over, right? So now you you only have like the serious Pokemon stuff left over, and I'm really hoping that we get something cool like that. That it it would be cool to see them try to take something darker. I now I can see them playing Gen Eight still safe, and we get something very similar to what we got in like X and Y or Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, and you get you get some kind of just like basic story like that and we still get the core experience but i could see them start to ease up on the reins a little bit and we no longer have tutorials Uh, maybe we don't have to have 15 minute cutscenes when you beat the game and i could just i can definitely see something being there like that um i do what though Hmm? They're still gonna have. They're still gonna have to teach us how to catch Pokemon because they you don't do it the same way. Let's go. That's true. That's true. That that is absolutely true. That is nuts. But though. Like, they mm-hmm. might do what they did in Crystal and allow you to skip the tutorial. That would be fantastic. Please let me skip the tutorial. Please. That would be yeah yeah. Because they they keep doing this every like even in Gen Six they did it to an extent just this hand holding and I really want them to stop it and I think this is I mean this is their opportunity to do it if they don't do it I think it's a missed opportunity if they don't stop holding my hand. I really hope they stop holding my hand too. I mean, it. I think I've said it before on the show. It's getting increasingly harder for me to accept being treated like a child who is now an age that could be my child when I'm playing video games. Yeah. So I'm fine with playing as a child. I just don't want to be treated like I cannot possibly be smarter than one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's there's so many problems with that. And I'm hoping that we can just get something darker. There's so many, there's so many things that this opens up. And I know a lot of people complain about Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee being not the games that they wanted. It looks too easy. And I know a lot of people didn't actually listen to the press conference because uh, for longtime listeners of the show, I, I saw App yesterday and I actually sat down and talked to him. And he's just like, why is it, Why are we always going back to Kanto? And I'm just like, I mean, just for this game. And then in 2019, you go back to the other one. He's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, did you not listen to the rest of it? <laughs> There's like mm-hmm. another game coming out. <laughs> um, so I, I'm really hoping that we get something uh, in the, I just hope we get something more serious, something that we've been wanting because we we've talked about this before. All of us have that. We want something a little bit darker, something a little bit more mature. Mature is the word. I think that's what I've been trying to hit. We want something a little bit more mature in our Pokemon games and now they can do it because you've got the let's go franchise. That's a really good, uh, for the lack of a better word, B list franchise that you can take your kids with. I, the great thing is you can play with your kids. I think that's fantastic. Oh. Yeah. Um. It, because that was the one thing I was worried about with Pokemon Go, and it does seem to be the truth is, well, this isn't a game for kids because what what five year old has a smartphone? And before you answer that question, I know it's more than zero, um, which boggles my mind. But they can go. You can go play Pokemon Go now when you're a kid and a teenager. But you're not gonna have too many like eight year old kids who love Pokemon being able to play Pokemon Go, except for like when their parents let them hold their phone, right? Yeah, uh, and the problem is the mm. the kind of parents that download Pokemon <laughs> Go are the kind of people who aren't going to let their kid play with their phone because they want to play Pokemon Go. And I mean, they manage like snag. Yeah, has, that's like, true. I see families every yeah. community day. 
I see families every there are, community day. I, I, there are families. I'm not saying there aren't. I'm just saying there aren't. Uh, there, I don't think there's a significant amount of them. And I think this is a great way to kind of like bridge the gap between the age gap that it probably exists in Pokemon Go. Because I, I do think there's an age gap in Pokemon Go currently in their player base. And I think this bridges that gap. Mostly because you can just like go hang out. The other thing that I saw was really cool and I don't we didn't talk about is I mostly in Japan. I know that in Japan people are using the Pokemon Go app as a pedometer. And not as not as a pedometer, but like as a distance tracker essentially. And mm. so think about this concept, and this is gonna blow your mind. I saw this on Twitter. Um, so let's say your grandfather uses Pokemon Go as the pedometer. He catches some Pokemon. Well, you can transfer Pokemon from Pokemon Go to let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee. And so he brings it home to grandchild who's eight years old and he just throws a Pokemon onto their Pokemon. Let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee because he doesn't care what Pokemon he caught. My mom was the same way because when Pokemon Go first came out, she's like, oh, I think I might use it as like a way to like get outside and go play more. She's like, but I don't care about Pokemon. Is there a way I can trade them to you? And so that that's something to think about. Like now, now your grandfather, your seventy year old grandfather, is now Professor Oak because he can just hand you a Pokemon. That is so adorable. I love it. Oh, I was taking it a completely different way, where the grandfather is going to die, and you have his Pokemon to remember him by. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> that's but where I, th- I thought you were taking it. Yeah, no, that's a little dark. I <laughs> I think it's more in the terms of hey, yeah, you have these awesome experiences you can have between family members because of this. And the, the one question I do have, because this is one, I don't have a lot of questions about these games. Cause I think they revealed everything that I cared about. And I'm going to be really bad at following at this new cycle. I feel really bad for that already because I, I try to stay on top of Pokemon news, but the amount of excitement I have for Pokemon go is very negligible or Pokemon. Let's go is very ne- negligible. Like I'm excited because I get a game that's going to hold me over until next year. I'm not excited because it's going to connect to my Pokemon Go. I'm not excited because it's going to, um, it's going to let me catch new things. Though we'll get to that in a second. Um, but I, I'm I'm okay with the fact that like, hey, I can have some kind of new Pokemon experience to try out for this year, and I get to revisit yes. Kanto, which is kind of nice. That'll be cool. And but uh, the the one thing that I do want to know from this new from the new cycle is what does it mean when you transfer your Pokemon from Pokemon Go to Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee? Is it and can you do the opposite? Is my question. Yeah, can you do the opposite? I, I doubt it's the opposite. I really do because I, I feel like that's game breaking. I feel like that breaks yeah. Pokemon Go. Um, though if they do it only like for generations, I can see it not because they're they're okay at this point of being like okay, you can catch everything in Gen One. That's super easy now, right? Um, mm, I, I mean, I, do you have a Mister Mime? I don't, but I could see them. I could see them. But going. you could catch one for us. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> not going by the rules of the game. Yes, you could just take a tra- trip. It's not too far from you. It's easier for you than for us, is what I'm saying. I have like thirty of them, and I was like holding on to them because I wanted to mm-hmm. trade them to you guys. But it looks like trading is never happening. So yeah, I, I'm really, I'm really wondering what's going to happen with that whole connectivity issue. They haven't talked about it. I, I guarantee you it's because they themselves haven't worked it out entirely either. I'm sure that they're just like, oh, they're going to do this. They're going to do that. Um, they, they haven't decided if they're going to send them back or not. And I, we'll see. Well, only time will tell. I'm also worried about when they do get transferred to the game. It looks like they go to the Pokemon Go Park from the trailer. And is that Pokemon Go Park? Can you battle with them still? Or do they just get stuck in the Pokemon Go Park? That's it's another a good question. question. I have. That's another question I have. Uh, they do also say that they're going to have different stats in Pokemon Let's Go, like different I- IVs and EVs. It's probably going to be more akin to the Pokemon Go style. So that's also another thing for everybody to watch out for. Um, I, I'm really curious how that's going to work out. And mm. just it's just things that just the little things to keep in mind. I'm not too worried about anything else. I mean, we could still do battles over the internet with this, but it's going to be a Gen One meta, so have fun with that. I guess um, you're going to just bring Alakazam, I guess, and you're going to win. You're going to be fine. <laughs> well, as long as they don't have the Gen One mechanics. Yeah, you, you have that need for speed. Yeah, not the stupid Gen One mechanics, but they're still probably going to have. It's still going to be a difficult meta, in my opinion. The the last thing I want to bring up with this, though, before we end it, is that they're going to... So 
they 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 captured the casual audience with these games really well. We've been talking about this for a while, but they also did something to like grab somebody like me, and that was they're just like, hey, by the way, there's gonna be a new Pokemon in Pokemon Let's Go. Yeah, and, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? Like this is like because it's not something that because it, it turns something that was an optional purchase for me into a I have to buy it because I need to know what's gonna happen with uh like with this new pokemon what is it i need to catch it because i was trained in the 90s to say i gotta catch them all and (laughs) so like i have to go find out what this is i have to i have to have access to it myself and so that means that that has to go buy let's go pikachu or let's go eevee i think it's let's go pikachu that's what i think my wife is forcing me to buy because she wants let's go eevee Uh, why do you need both that's a solid question, and it's because Especially my wife. Especially if you're to not going to play, it's multiplayer, right? So why do you need two? So we can it's, both it's go actually through it. A, That's a very yeah, good question. I, I thought about it, but I've just said I'm not going to ask too many questions about it. It's fine. Well, go ahead, Bumstar. like they, they did say they have version exclusives, mm-hmm. but um, they also said you can have multiple play files on a yeah. single card. So well, it's not on the cart. It's getting... saved on the Switch, which is really interesting, actually. Mm. If you get like the version exclusive Pokemon from Go, mm. you don't really need both versions. That's true, but I I don't know. I for the sake of completeness, I feel like I'm gonna get one, mm. just for the sake of completeness, and d- that way I can actually talk about it and stuff like that on the show and be somewhat informed. Okay, I get you. I think that's what it's going to be. I mean, you're going to purchase one as well, but granted, you don't have like a husband that's going to play it alongside of you. No, my boyfriend is definitely not going to play Let's Go yeah, Eevee with me. Exactly. Exactly. Um, maybe he can jump in as your player too. Maybe he'll do that just be out of curiosity. Um, if you manage to have him do that, you're probably like, you have mind bending powers or something. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think this is a good place to end it, though. And we'll take a short break here, guys. And we'll come right back at you with uh, the Pokemon of the episode. Catch you on the flip-flop. Hey, kids. I hear you like soda. I've even heard that you may like that soda called Corsola Cola. Well, let me tell you something, kid. You ain't even had soda if you're drinking Corsola Cola. You know, if you drink that soda, it makes your gums bleed. Specifically, it only makes your gums bleed. Instead, we recommend you try Toxa Pepsi, the trusted soft drink brand that guarantees that all of your teeth will fall out after two to three cans. Drinking Toxa Pepsi even gives you a 40% increased chance of heart failure after a week of steady consumption. So why even waste your time with lesser soda brands like Corsola Cola? Drink Toxa Pepsi instead. The taste is merciless. Poke of the episode. And welcome back to the show. Our Pokede- Pokemon of the episode is National Dex number 652, Chestnut, the Spiny Armor Pokemon. When it takes a defensive posture with its fists guarding its face, it could withstand a bomb blast. Wow, that's just that is why it's bulletproof. Yeah, bulletproof is on it. Like, okay, so I was gonna take a bit and just like we usually do, jump into like what tier and its space stats and everything, but because bulletproof is such an odd ability and it blocks the most random things, I wanted to talk about that mostly because it, there's probably translation issues in some of the move names. Oh yeah, that's the only reason. Yeah, and so bulletproof. Is an ability, and it says it protects the Pokemon from some ball and bomb moves or something like that. And so the list of moves, I'm going to just read it off because it some of them make sense, but other ones are just like, wow, I didn't think Bulletproof would block that. And so you have Acid Spray, which I wouldn't think, right? Aura Sphere, maybe. Uh, Barrage makes sense. Beak Blast is surprising to me, uh, though nobody's using Beak Blast competitively. Um, and then you have Bullet Seed, Egg Bomb, Electro Ball, Energy Ball, Focus Blast, Gyro Ball, Ice Ball, Magnetic Bomb, Mist Ball from Psychic Type. What? Who, who gets Mist Ball? Is it just the Laddies? Latias. Yeah. It's an exclusive, yeah. Yeah. 
And then Mud Bomb, Octazooka, Pollen Puff from Rip on B, uh, Rock Blast, which also amazes me. Rock Wrecker still amazes me. Searing Shot, Seed Bomb, Shadow Ball. That one gets me because I would honestly, even without thinking, like being like, yeah, it has bulletproof. I would click Shadow Ball on Chestnut. And then oh, people do that, yeah, and they and get the, disappointed. Yeah, I, I mean, because that's not something I would think of. So this is just like the more you know, like this is what we're doing. And then there's Sludge Bomb, which I think is a big one when you're fighting Chestnut, uh, Weather Ball, and also Zap Cannon. Those are the moves though that you have to watch out for because those will get blocked by Bulletproof if you're playing Chestnut, which is amazing because like Sludge Bomb is a move that I think a lot of people would try to use against a Chestnut in like matchups. Yeah, it's, it, it's the reason I won my PDL match against mm-hmm. Shamu, bulletproof blocking sludge bomb. That's nutsos. And on top of that, I believe he's RU. So he actually has a decent move pool on top of that because he gets uh, he gets spikes, he gets wood hammer, synthesis, leech seed, drain punch, spiky shield. Um, oh my gosh, what else does he get? He gets bulldoze, dragon claw. Uh, Bullet. He gets um, Shadow Claw and he gets Thunder Punch. Poison Jab. Power Up Punch. Yeah. He's Super just, Power. Uh, he's just nuts. Uh, like, he, he's got a decent move pool. It's not bad he whatsoever. Gets, oh, it's very good. It's very versatile, surprisingly. He also gets Zen Headbutt. Fun fact. Yeah, and he gets Stone Thumping Edge. Tantrum oh. now. This is just gross, man. Iron Head. <laughs> Uh, he's just got a decent move pool, and that his stats help back that up too. Base one eighty eight HP, base one hundred seven attack, one twenty two defense, uh, one or seventy four special attack, seventy five special defense, and sixty four speed. So he's not super fast, but he's he's physically bulky, and he he's got tr- spiky shield which helps out along with leech seed, leech seed, and drain punch, and drain punch. Yep. So like he's he's doing pretty good. I mean, you throw bulletproof on him, maybe some lefties. And you just go to town. There's there's a couple options for that. I mean, the big one I think right now is uh, spikes, wood hammer, synthesis. Uh, probably actually leech seed. Leech seed is better IMO. And then I would probably go drain punch. Uh, you could on top of that, you could swap out like spiky shield for any of those because spiky shield will just eat everything up. It'll help you protect things. And on top of that, you you get damage if you try to attack him. It's so yep. good. It's so good. I mean, Chestnut's a decent mod. Yes, I think the only thing that's stopping it from being in a higher tier is A, it's slow, and B, like, Bird Spam is everywhere, and Bird Spam Mm -hmm. destroys Chestnut. Oh, yeah, Flying Type, I've said this on the show before, Flying Type is probably one of the most solid types in the metagame right now because it it's not resisted by anything real big very minus, little resists it yeah like i think it's steel types that's the big one and i think you'll see celesteel or skarmory come in and take a steel type or a flying type move mm-hmm. but uh, outside of that there's not much that take it very well and so if you can get like a mega pincer set up real well you're gonna do some damage yeah um, other things he can get walled out by other um what's it called other grass types like mm-hmm. rosa raid or something like that you can get walled out by that and I mean, because his special defense isn't that great. If you go in there with like a good fire type, he's gonna get destroyed as well. Yeah. It's a it's some it's fire or psychic, I should say, fire or psychic. Those are gonna be the bane of his existence. But those, I mean, you you can definitely come up with things to help him compensate for that. And he's a decent. I mod. mean, he he doesn't do too well against fairies either. That's. I true. mean, he does have he does have the coverage for most of those types. It's just that it's too slow to take advantage of mm-hmm. it. And his special defense, and, like I said, is yeah. a 75, so it's not great. Mm-hmm. He, he's not doing too hot. That's... I think the reason you'd want to use it in the first place, though, over some other fighting or grass types is the fact that it has spikes, though, more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. It's defensive enough that if, like, if you can get him in safely, he can get like one, maybe even two layers of spikes if your opponent doesn't have like a flying type to take care of it right away. Yeah. And absolutely. Like it's solid. It's solid enough. He's not, he's not bad. Like I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. So if we look at the TCG for Chestnut, there's not too much. I think the last card that came out was Breakthrough, and that's going to get rotated out. And it was out. terrible. It was yeah, terrible. It is terrible. It's like uh, the Chestnut's like one grass, double colorless, spike lariat, 60 plus. 
Um, if he has damage on it, it turns into 120, but that's still like three, you're, or stage two doing 120 for three energy. And then the other one's Adamantine Press, which is double leaf, double colorless. That's 100 damage, and it's reduced by 20 damage if he gets attacked, which is still nothing. It's It was a garbage card. It was the yeah. first set of the break cards. He also so has a break. Still like, he does have a break. Which is terrible. It's the worst of the three Callow starters to, with oh, breaks because they absolutely. all got breaks, right? Yeah, Delphox is really good, that break card. Delphox I, is good, and obviously Greninja, Greninja was like yeah. a main deck. Yeah, so it's getting Delphox rotated. Just I was very upset about it, but you as know, he should like, be. But I mean, new cards. That's how rotation works, man. <laughs> uh, and you've got uh, what is this? It's two two grass energy and a double colors for tough hammer, and it does thirty damage to itself. It does one sixty, but thirty to itself and thirty damage to an opponent's bench Pokemon. Wow, it's not that great. It's just it's never just, enough. It's just never enough. Stage fours essentially are just, or stage threes, I should say, are just really hard to pull off in general. I think. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think, but Chestnut in competitive Pokemon, like in, I, I don't think it was in VGC. I don't think he did too hot in VGC, but um, he, in, in RU, I know last gen he did decently well. You can make Chestnut work in, in uh, gen six. Now I haven't played too much RU. I'm hoping to do it in like the next few months, but in R, I haven't played too much with Chestnut, but I do know he can be solid. Bulletproof always catches me off guard because he, like, I think it's Como O that gets it as well. That's the only other thing, yes. And that's that's the big thing. He, I mean, his typing is really good, though. He has six resistances. Uh, granted, he does have, like, six weaknesses. Weaknesses with a quad yeah. weakness. One of them is quad. But he gets, like, six weaknesses. But it's not... I mean, Breloom does pretty well, and Chestnut's essentially Breloom. And Verizian, right? Like, yeah, and Verizian. They make good one, so... Yeah. So, like, this typing isn't terrible. I think grass fighting is a fun type. So... That's uh that's my that's my takeaway here. <laughs> Interestingly, Verizian is in the same tier, so hmm. they play very differently. Well, the they do because they do play very differently. Yeah. Like one, especially defensive, one is physically defensive, and one mm-hmm. is not slow as molasses, and one is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's the true part about it. Yeah. No, this is a, I really enjoy uh, Chestnut. I think it's a fun mod. We'll definitely have to think about building around him in the future. Because well, like Whimsicott was saying, she has it on her PDL team, and mm-hmm. I had it on my PDL team last uh, season. So clearly, it is a Pokemon that people with taste use to success. <laughs> mm-hmm. here, oh, he gets, here, I forgot it gets bulk up. Yeah, that's that's good. Oh, too. it also gets iron defense. It, like if you eliminate mm. enough special attackers and you just plant a chestnut there, iron defense, and it's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's nuts. Those. And obviously, he gets Frenzy Plant, which he can't really use at all. But no, that's fine. Nah. Well, that's fine. No, why would why would he ever need that? It's fine. Um, he gets Thunder Punch now. That's kind of cool. Oh, uh, by the way, if you really are into playing it offensively, it gets Sword Stance. Oh, that could be fun. I could actually see that going to some success. I'm really more interested in the fact that he gets Zen Headbutt now. I feel like that could be used for some good coverage. Yes, and Headbutt and Thunder Punch are really good coverage options. Like, okay, you're afraid of flying types. If you can catch one on the switch in with a Thunder Punch, you're gold. Mm-hmm. I really feel like he's got some really solid coverage. It also has Stone Edge, though, if you want to just oh, yeah. really... But it's not nope. reliable. I I mean, it depends if you need it to one-shot sometimes. Stone Edge misses literally 100% of the time you need it to hit. Like that that's honestly it. Like, oh man, I'm in on this uh flying type, you click Stone Edge, but then your opponent switches into a steel type, it'll hit. And then you need it to hit on a switch in. No, it'll miss. It's fine. Nobody cares. That's th- this game's awful. It hurts you so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, at least he's one of the few Pokemon that s- can still get power up punch in Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. That's nice. Because that's they pretty got- big. Yeah, because they got rid of like easy access to power up punch after Gen 6. Because that was clearly deliberate. They, it they was deliberate. Their mistakes. <laughs> it was deliberate because of uh, what's it called? Kangaskhan. Mega Kangaskhan. Yep. They they learned. They're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't allow power up punch on like things that can hit twice. And it's just like, yeah, well, I probably shouldn't. That would be awful. So they they learned. Yeah, the only ones that get it via Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Uh, just just tidbits for people to know. Grimer. Grimer gets it. Uh, via Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, Wooper, Ma Isle, Cacnea, Kecleon, Chimchar, Buneary, 
uh, which is good to know because low punny is pretty sweet. Uh, Munchlax, Timber, Scraggy, Chespin, Froakie, and Phantom. Phantom. That's interesting. I'd like to see that work. Very. Uh, mm-hmm. And if you do the Monferno from uh, the Island Scan, you'll have it as well. So, oh, that's cool. Actually. I forgot. I forgot about Island Scan. Island Scan, such a good thing. I'm so happy it exists. It was a lot more valuable before the bank came. So yes, that's very true. But yes, that is gonna be it then for the Pokemon of the episode. We are gonna switch gears, guys, and go check out your emails in the mailbag. Time for the mailbag. Send in your emails. The mail's here. Check your inbox. It's time for the mailbag. Mail! And welcome to the mailbag segment. The mailbag, as always, is brought to you by the energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves! Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and as always, uh, we're going to be giving out the Green Tauros badge roll to anybody that we think wins it. Uh, we have two emails today to read for you guys. Uh, we, we did have three sent in. One of them was by Hanakane, um, but it is like 1,600 words long, and that will take us literally forever to read. So unfortunately, we cannot get to it today. But thank you for sending that in. Um, you did have a lot of good things to say. Um, for those of you uh, new to the show, this is the part of the show where we read listener emails. You can send an email to into us at pucklepodcast at gmail.com. We really uh, do listen to every... We do read every email. Uh, however, not every one of them makes it to the show. We typically have a mailbag question. Our last question was, uh, Do you, what do you think Gen 8 will be like? And so we want to uh, get into that then, I guess. Um so I guess our first one is going to be from Cowboy. I'll read that one because he uh, he added some other interesting things in here. Hey, everybody. Cowboy here. I must say that I would love a Gen 8 game. New Pokemon are fun. I must say that if it were to be the last, I would hope to finish all of the EV EV evolution types. I mean, you're not going to be able to. I don't think it's going to be the last generation. I don't think we'll ever. I, I don't think I'll live to see the last generation of Pokemon. <laughs> Also to add, an, an African gen would be perfect. I would love a tribal game. But guess what country is in Africa that I would think would have a really good spin on it? Wait for it. Egypt. So some reasons I, w- I would hope that they would include Egypt is pyramids. I think that another wonder of the world would be cool to explore. I know it would be sandy and run down run down into the ground and rock types. But hey, who didn't like Crocodile? Um, actually, they did a cool pyramid thing in the Battle Frontier. Remember that? Um, they did do that. Two, there could be a uh, a god of the sun like Ra, dragon Pokemon, who is a pseudo legendary. He would probably actually be the legendary IMO. Um, typing fire dragon, of course. Other Pokemon I would love to see is a zombie Pokemon. How would it would instantly become my favorite? It would tie in perfect with Egypt because of that Pokemon's ability would be mummy. Oh, that would be great, actually. More Pokemon mm-hmm. with the ability mummy would be really good. Uh, oh, the return of the mummy. I can definitely see a Frankenstein's monster looking Pokemon or a skeletal looking Pokemon, which could also tie into tribal African Pokemon too, with all their bone themes. I would hope to see a burning bush Pokemon to pertain to Moses in the Bible. That's, uh, mm, yeah, let's not. Let's um, not go there. The very first fire grass Pokemon. <laughs> no, I like jalapeno better. Jala- jalapeno is, is going to be like our fire grass Pokemon forever. Yeah. Lastly, I think Egypt could help the feel of the game because we just played through two other tropical games, Oras and Usum. I don't think Oras is a tropical game. Uh, there's tropical <laughs> aspects of it, but yeah. there's also a desert in that game. Like, <laughs> just throwing that. Out. You know what region we all hate? But... You know what region we all hate? The desert one of Or. So mm, maybe, maybe not. I'm not. I'm just gonna say that I don't hate Or. I don't think we got to explore Or properly. Like that's my feeling on Or because Or was more of like a, a jump to places you want to go system than an exploratory region. You know, like oh, I need to go to this region and just like you fast travel. You don't. There are no routes or anything. It'd be really interesting to see some route esque places in Or, but I think it's purposely a desert so that you don't feel like you're intrigued to do that. That's mm. that's just my that my thing on that. 
Um, one thing I must add, if it were to come to the Switch or 3DS, is put in some Pokemon Stadium style mini games. It would be awesome to bring those back, especially if you can use your own Pokemon to play against anyone on the go. Can make a Greninja Throwing Star one, or who knows? I think it is a grand idea. Tournament play at Worlds? Uh, can't make it to PuckleCon because my wife and I are having our first anniversary, as it may be hard every year because of a matter of that. Anyways, hope you enjoyed and had a good conversation. Cowboy out. Thanks again, Puckle. Uh, you should just tell your wife that you should celebrate your anniversary at PuckleCon. Boom. My wife wouldn't fly for that either, but that's fine. <laughs> um, oh, he has an interesting add-on later. Oh, yeah? Like the zombie Pokemon he mentioned, it should be the first normal ghost type. That would be cool. I don't know. Like I feel like normal ghosts would be super OP. I agree. The, that would be really OP because you're going to have you're going to have immunity to ghosts, which is one of ghost weaknesses. Um, you're going to have immunity to fighting, which is normal's only weakness. So like you get the normal type for free. That's the big thing to note. You're getting free normal type, which I think is really huge in general because every Pokemon gets normal type moves. Every Pokemon. And so you teach this Pokemon return. It's getting free return stab. So that's like base 150-ish move just I mean, for no weakness. What you, what you do is you just don't give it really good stats. It's balanced. I mean, it's a uh, it's a zombie, so I imagine his defenses are awful, and his speed. Yeah, and his speed. I, I can see that. It, it's a Pokemon destined for PU or NU. Mm-mm. Definitely. Uh, we have one more super short one from Bigby. It looks like if somebody wants to grab that one, I'll do it. I'll keep this one short and sweet. What I want from Gen Eight is a bank system from 3DS to Switch that is not convoluted and available at launch. That's all. I am reading all this stuff again. Flip flops, Big B. Yeah, Big B. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> yeah. Man, a Pokemon. I really hope Pokemon Bank is available at launch for these next games. I'm all, I'm also very curious about Pokemon Bank compatibility for Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Uh, mm. I was I was discussing it with somebody uh, because it seems like there might be some kind of transfer between it. Because if they're going to reveal a new Pokemon with Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, they better allow it to be able to com- be compatible with, you know, all of the Pokemon I've collected in the main Pokemon franchise, right? The the thing is, like you say, this Pokemon is going to be available there. I somehow doubt they're going to be making it exclusively available through there, like maybe for a year or so. I that's that's true. I. Granted that, but I think they, I think there'll still be a way to get it out, or they'll do something at the launch of the next game so you can get it or something. But I would be very. That's what they'll do. I, that's probably the most likely solution. I would like to see a way for you to, maybe it doesn't have to be like exact from Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu because I know the stats are going to be different, so that creates a problem. But you can definitely have a Pokemon transporter esque system that maybe only works for that one Pokemon, or maybe works for like. Um, a few Pokemon from the game or something like that so you can transfer them up because I can see it becoming a big issue when you're trying to convert the Let's Go crowd like the people who came just for Let's Go to the core series games and we've already all complained about how it's impossible to bring our Pokemon from Gen 2 to Gen 3 and Game Freaks noticed that that's a problem Mm. and that's the thing they have an issue with right but but you're forgetting that Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee are geared towards the Go crowd, and the Go crowd grinds Pokemon into candy like nobody's business. Okay, okay, so, so I, I agree if with you're you. Not, if you're not, breed, like, they didn't tell us if this game has breeding. Did you notice oh, that? It oh, doesn't, it doesn't have breeding. It definitely doesn't. So you're not spending, like, six days breeding for that competitive Pokemon or for that competitive shiny. So the Pokemon in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are way more disposable in a way. I agree with you that they're way more disposable. But at the same time, when I was a kid going from Pokemon Blue to Pokemon Gold and Silver, I wasn't doing it because I thought, oh, man, this Pokemon's really competitively viable. I go, my Blastoise is my favorite Pokemon. I want to take it to Pokemon Gold and Crystal. Right? And so you bring it over. And so especially if you're trying to if you're trying to convert people, if if the goal of the Pokemon company is to go and say, okay, so this is a two step process. You you got hooked on Pokemon Go. Well, here's a game on the switch for you. And so you bring them over to the switch and then the hope is they'll buy the next Pokemon game, too. That's probably not that big of a deal for them because they want to turn the Let's Go thing into a franchise of its own. And 
they'll just have them buy the Let's Go games, which is fine as well. But if they want to convert people from that to the other Pokemon games, the main the main core Pokemon games, they probably should implement some system. Now, I think it could be one way. I'm totally fine with it being one way from Let's Go to core because I think that makes the most sense because you're probably going to have to have some stat recalculation, which will probably be something similar like from the virtual console games to yeah. to Pokemon Bank. That's kind of the world I see it going in. Yeah, that that sounds perfectly plausible. I, I don't ever see me being able to take my Pokemon now from Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon and putting them into Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. But I think there might be a transporter system from Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee to Pokemon Bank. And I think that... It's honestly the middleman I think they've been looking for because if you remember when Pokemon Go was first announced way back, way back in like 2015, um, they said something about how they do plan for Pokemon Go to interact with the main series of Pokemon. Yeah. And this would be the middleman for that because you get to go, hey, let's go Pikachu. I can put my Pokemon from Pokemon Go in there and then I can transfer my Pokemon from let's go Pikachu into Pokemon Bank. You can actually tell it was planned because in the code there is a symbol for a Pokemon coming from Go, same as mm-hmm. there's a symbol from a Pokemon from Kalos or Alola or the Virtual Console games. Yeah, they just found a way to monetize that transfer path. Mm-mm. That's that's honestly the big thing, which I think will be really interesting to see how that works out. I I, I think I think there will be a transfer. I don't know that there will be a that there will be a back and forth, but I think there will be a transfer. It's likely. So uh, just just keep your eyes on that because I feel like that will just, like especially if your your target audience is like kids and you want your kid the kids to like grow up into like the main series Pokemon games the hardcore versions right just being able to be like well I had my Blastoise in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and I want to be able to move that to Pokemon I don't know what they're gonna call it Pokemon like uh I don't, I don't know Pokemon Steel version you know and they oh you can do better than I'm that. bad at this right now off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> Come but, on, like they've done Sun and Moon. At this point, nothing is too cheesy for them. It could oh, be man. Pokemon Light and Dark. It could be Pokemon Up and Down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be let's be real bad and call it Pokemon Plus and Minus. You know, you have to. Oh gosh. Yeah, we're awful people. Um, and so we're Pokemon One and Zero. Um, and then, but yeah, you can move your Pokemon to that, and that gives that kid like, oh man, I'm playing this new Pokemon game. With my Blastoise that I had in Let's Go, you know? Yeah. Um, I doubt that kid's going to have too much reservation about not being able to put it back in Let's Go at that point. But that, that's how you convert and you grow the community. And then maybe you get new competitive <laughs> players. And maybe maybe in 2019, or not in 2019, but in 2020, we see a surgence of new competitive players, you know, coming to the scene. Well, It'd they do need to fill out the ranks of the junior ranks because in, there's in general, juniors playing VGC. In general, they need to because there's just been uh, the attendance just ke- it goes through its normal cycles and it never like it goes up like at the first season of a new generation, but then just dies off right away. You know, that's that's the big thing. But I think yeah. that is uh, that's a that's a good place to wrap it up. Um, yeah. It, so badge. Uh, badge. I think don't they all have it? <laughs> or am I Does wrong? Cowboy already have it? I don't know. Does Bigby have it? <laughs> Mm, maybe I, it's is like he might have it, but it's hard to tell he now. Also only sa- he only sent a sentence, so he doesn't count. Um, so it's Cowboy. Do we want to give it to Cowboy? I mean, he had some cool idea like zombie Pokemon with the normal ghost type. Mm-hmm. I like that. I mean, if Cowboy wants it, it's all his. He just has to come, sure. to, come to the thing and ask for it. It's all his. He can turn his name green now. Oh, right. Uh, if you want to send an email next week, you can do so at pucklepodcast at gmail.com, letting us know what your uh, what your thoughts are on Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Are you going to buy it? Are you excited for it? Let us know. Send us an email, pucklepodcast at gmail.com. In the meantime, if you want to do more cool Puckly stuff with us throughout the week, you can check out our social medias, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. All of those links are in the show notes and also on our website, pucklepodcast.com. You can, of course, watch me and Jushiro on Twitch. Jushiro and I on Twitch. That's the grammatically correct way to say that. Um, Actually, at- no, because you can watch me. Yeah. Uh, you can check that out at twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast, where we stream Pokemon TCG and video game right now. Maybe some Pokemon Quest. I really don't want to, though. And then you can also... 
uh, check out all of our other stuff. Or I think we're going to try to get the YouTube going. Um, so, or if you want to listen to podcasts on YouTube, we're starting to post the podcast on our YouTube <sighs> channel, which is Puckle Podcast. And finally, if you want to help out the show monetarily, you can do so in a couple of ways. One, if you're a Twitch Prime or a Amazon Prime user, you have a Twitch Prime subscription. So if you just log into Twitch, you can subscribe to our channel. That helps us out. Uh, that gives us an extra $2 to play with. You can also go ahead and go to patreon.com slash Puckle Podcast. Give us some regular support. That really helps us out. And finally, if you want to just buy some cool Puckle swag, you can do so at T Public. Uh, the sh- that link is in the show notes as well. I think we're actually putting up a PuckleCon shirt for that, by the way. So that's going to be really exciting. Oh. There's going to be an official PuckleCon T Public shirt. So if you're coming to PuckleCon this year, it's going to be really cool. We have some really cool art that Ozzy came up with, with uh, with like the Carillon Bell Tower in Dayton, Ohio, and stuff like that. It's so awesome. It looks really cool. So we that's going to be up on the T Public store here in the next week or so. And so I guess that's going to be it. Um, remember, PuckleCon, though, is July 21st and 22nd in the Dayton, Ohio Convention Center, room 306. Everything can be found online at PucklePodcast.com. Uh, do we so, do we really want to make that joke? Because it's not be there or be square. It's be there or be a Pokemon on Pokemon Quest. <laughs> All right. On that note. I'm so sorry. <laughs> on that note, I'm Trader that. I am the flockiest whimsicker. And I'm Sublime Man. And you're in the Lavender Town Radio Tower. It's closing time. It's closing time.